and there she was, cresting the ragged rocks, casually scattered by some huge force. We gaped, starstruck across the flowered fields to where the goddess rose, like some vast sculpture made by powers not conceived by man. The goddess rose from calm and quiet meadows of the unviolated sanctuary. We, not first to burst upon the scene, were yet to be the ones who reached the goddess's crown. Not conquerors, but pilgrims, seeking light, not fame. In those past days, we came from far to love, enjoy, and cherish mountains and the lands about them, not to foul or spoil their timeless, fragile peace. A poet wrote, "High mountains are to me a feeling felt in the heart and felt in the blood." He said it well, but only part. He might have added, "For my soul's sake." My son and my son's sons will never see or know what I have seen and known. They'll get the leavings, scraps that greedy, careless, selfish men have torn and spoiled. My sons' sons will find the virgin forests gone, white mountains fouled with trash and scraps, clear waters fouled with human waste. That time cannot remove green wooded slopes, stripped bare for wood to burn or waste. The scars bleed soil and wash into the sea. Sheep graze in mighty flocks where only Bharal singly grazed before. But man's the foe of nature. Man knows better and does worse to other living things. Man fouls his nest. And cuts the trees, and burns the brush, and forages his flocks, which kill the soil. Years ago, we made our way along the mighty Rishi Gorge into the sanctuary, found it sweet and pure and new, climbed the great peak, and left it sweet and pure. Since then, a score, no, more, of others. Came that way and climbed. They cannot foul the goddess. No man could. But they have fouled her garden for their sons' sons. But wait, there's time. For God and time will heal these wounds if man will let them heal. It still can be that men, both wise and brave, can halt the rape and save the wilds. We need to count the blessings given us, and save and hand them on to our sons' sons and daughters too, of course. We must. There's time. We cry halt to those who are too blind to see. The Nanda Devi is but one of scores and scores of wild and blessed hills, islands of peace and joy, and home to many living things. Man's future rests on holding these as dear and safe as life itself. So many years ago, we were the happy, lucky ones to be there early on. Now we must help to save what's left, so our sons' sons can have a little of the joy. Not greed, not fame, must draw man to the woods and hills and sacred places. Not noise and trash and wastes, but only memories must mark his visit to the holy places. Now, act now, my lords. Think now of what you wish your sons and their sons too to know and love. Know well that what you do or fail to do will save or kill the future for us all.